Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of JMC Edu Trends, a discussion that informs, inspires, and transcends. To all our first-time viewers, this program streams live on www.facebook/josemariacollege and on YouTube at JMC Edu Trends. Don't forget to type in your comments and questions, send your emojis, click the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell so you would be notified of future discussions on JMC Edu Trends. Without much delay, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome the program host of today's discussion. Hello, a pleasant afternoon, everyone. It is a heartfelt gratitude to each one of you for being here with us today, garnering your time and effort to learn, even though we are now on the verge of our finals week. We are very pleased to welcome you all, my fellow Jaimarians, those viewers who are joining our live stream video via Facebook and YouTube page, to our guest speaker who will be with us today, uh, Engineer Elaine Joy De Leon. Greetings, ma'am and welcome to JMC. And of course, I also would like to welcome my fellow outstanding engineering students in this another episode of JMC Edu Trends, a discussion that informs, inspires, and transcends. I am Charmaine Raka A. Eronico, and I will be your host for today's Abrast event. Before we proceed with our discussion, I would like to take this opportunity to give thanks to our very own ever supportive uh, professor of ES413, Engineer Nika K. Balanio. Thank you so much, ma'am, for making this event possible. So now, I would like to share an inspiring quote that I, ha that I had read, and I know everyone will relate to it in our today's discussion. It's there is no secret to success but hard work and perseverance. Like any other field of work, especially in engineering, there is no way, uh, there is no easy route to finish a certain project. Along the process, we will undergo with lots of stress and pressures, dealing with problems and how to solve it in due time, right? But with hard work and perseverance, the goal is undeniably visible and is capable to reach. I know everyone are now curious of what this discussion might be. But before that, uh, let me remind everyone that if you, have, uh, if you guys have questions or want to voice out your concerns, kindly comment your messages on the comment section below. We will cater all of it once we started our Q&A later after the short break. So without further ado, we have Miss Alexis Makasampon to introduce us with our guest speaker for today's discussion. Miss Alexis? Yes, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, she was in the University of Mindanao. Within just five years, she was able to get a engineering. And during her time in the university, she was just like any other normal um, college student. She studied hard, but also lives a life full of freedom. She often lost um, interest in studying, but that did not stop her from achieving the degree she wanted so much. And she said that whenever she felt like losing focus in her studies, she would just remind herself that um, or why she started. And once she realized her goals, she will bounce back stronger than before. She was not the most studious person during her university days, but she gave it her all. She is a living proof that hard work pays off. She is now working as a quantity surveyor or project control engineer at CK Builders Construction and Development Corporation. So everyone, let us all welcome engineer Elaine Joy de Leon. Hello, ma'am, welcome.
Oh, hello, hello. Sorry, uh, ito okay na? Okay. So, good afternoon everyone. Uh, sorry for that technical problem. So, I di ko napansin nakapatay pala yung mic ko. So, I would like, again, I would like to express my gratitude for uh, JMC, uh, to JMC I mean, for inviting me to this uh, webinar to talk about um, my scope of work, which is quantity surveying. So, uh, thank you to Ms. Alexis, uh, most especially for uh, inviting me to discuss this very uh, interesting topic. So, uh, without uh, much further ado, I think I would start na siguro. So, okay. Uh, for a while. So, how do Okay, so uh, sorry for that technical problem. Uh, first time ko kasi mag-webinar, so uh, medyo kabado ako. And uh, this is my first time outside Zoom to try uh, different applications. So medyo hindi ako bihasa. So, um, okay, without further, further much ado, I will be starting my presentation. So, Quantity Surveying 101. So, Managing Construction Costs from Outset to Completion. So, um... As a student, siguro, uh, as a college student, hindi familiar yung quantity surveying sa atin. So, if you say surveying, the first thought that comes to mind is line and grade ba yan? Uh, yan ba yung gumagamit ng chodolite? Yan ba yung gumagamit ng trans transit? So, actually, um, quantity surveying, this deals about um, quantities from the title itself, quantity. So, um, what quantities are we talking about? So, um, my uh, presentation would talk about, or my presentation covers um, the role of quantity surveyors um, during the construction process. So that is why managing construction costs from outset to completion. So outset from the beginning of the construction prog uh, process to its end. So uh, that's um, our, um, uh, that's the scope of my um, presentation. So, again, so what is quantity surveying? So, I talked about this kanina. So, we deal about quantities. Uh, later on, later on sa aking presentation, I will talk about what quantities are we um, measuring. So, serving or measuring. So, okay. So, um, we have different branches of civil engineering and as I've mentioned kanina, it is uh, quantity surveying. This is not very known to college students. What we most know or what we usually know is structural engineers, yung nagbidil sa structural integrity ng buildings. Also, water resource. So, uh, medyo familiar tayo dyan. Geotechnical, those who deal with um, uh, yung lupa. So, mga foundation, ganon. Transportation. Uh, construction and environmental engineering. So um, this is the basic branches of civil engineering that 
most of the students are very particular, very um, medyo alam na nila to. So, actually, quantity surveying is under construction, the construction branch. So, together with site engineers, together with project managers. So, quantity surveyors are under or in construction, in the construction branch of in civil engineering. So, to further show to you, or para mas ma-explain ko ng maigi kung ano yung, um, to just give you an overview or a bird's eye look to what quantity surveyors do or what quantity survey, what is the essence of quantity surveying. So in the construction process, there is three uh, major or three siguro sabi nating foundation of construction. So this three, I presented in a Venn diagram para mas medyo ma-picture out natin is the design branch or the design aspect. So um, this one, the design is um, yung mga architect natin. So usually they are behind um, or they are the ones who are um, present in the planning process of the project. So pre-construction. And then we also have manage. So this manage is ito yung yung nag oversee ng project so all of the aspects that um, all of the functions all of what is happening all of the activities um, in, that is happening in the construction uh, process so sila yung nagmamanage or sila yung nag over overlook or oversee sila yung in charge so the third one would be the execute uh, would be execute or sila yung nag implement ng plans from the design process so sila yung nandun sa site, sila yung present nandun sa site. They see It began with a vision of a man who believes in education. As an enabling force that leads to the enlightenment and transformation of individual in a society. What started in 2002, Jose Maria College flourished and has grown into one of the leading institutions in this part of the country best law school offering the best facilities with the best teachers yet offering it at a very low rate and this is very unique and uh, we should give our thanks to Pastor Apollo Kibuloy for making this happen. Uh, I would like to thank the school, the administration and Pastor Kibuloy for opening up another law school after 54 years. This would be uh, a good uh, help also in the community and uh, for the next so many years we'll have uh, lawyers uh, I'm sure of quality education would be graduating from the Jose Maria College. The work of a true J. Morian is being excellent in different aspects. A true J. Marian is always competitive wherever he goes. A true J. Marian is not only smart, but also educated. A J. Marian is a good leader. A true J. Marian is someone who is fearless. They aren't afraid to show whoever they are. A true J. Marian is a person with a golden heart. That is why I'm a proud J. Marian. I am proud J. Marian. And I am proud to be a J. Marian. And I am proud to be a J. Marian. And I am proud to be a J. Marian. And I'm proud to be one of them.
the Jose Maria College is an academic institution with a vision to address and extend academic needs of the community, most especially in its neighboring metropolis. The institution has its major mission to address educational convergence following the Philippine agenda of the government, which is to make an intervention in the achievement of quality education of the region and in the Philippines as a whole. In accordance with the pertinent provisions of Republic Act No. 7722, otherwise known as the Higher Education Act of 1994 and the Virtue of Resolution No. 160-2019 of the Commission on Higher Education, this government permit number 012 series of 2019 is hereby granted to Jose Maria College sa sa Davao City, Philippines to operate and conduct the Doctor of Medicine program. The Jose Maria College of Medicine Foundation is now ready to serve everyone, especially the community. Jose Maria College, being a non-sectarian, a globally competitive school, and is well known for its world-class facilities. As the school vies for excellence across the globe, it ensures to provide assured, consistent, and quality education. The Jose Maria College of Medicine Foundation is the third newest school of medicine in Davao region. With the vision and mission of the institution, the Jose Maria College of Medicine Foundation offers a scholarship program, especially for the unfortunate, underprivileged, deprived, competent, and deserving individuals expressly manifest their intention to study and finish their health education. Let us all welcome the newest school of medicine, The Jose Maria College of Medicine Foundation. We are now ready to serve you. Just what it is in, in me Sometimes, sometimes I don't know what gives me in your love Why you never let me go And though you're in me now I fall and hurt you still My Lord, please show me how To know just how you feel You have forgiven me so many times it seems I feel I'm not what you might call A worthy Christian after all And though I love you so Temptation finds its way to me Teach me to trust in you With all of my heart To lead out of my own I'm 
Okay, so uh, very sorry, uh, nawala yung internet connection dito sa amin, so I shall continue. Uh, I think I was cut off after introducing the different branches, as my colleagues say. So I will be discussing this again. Uh, very sorry again for the technical problem. I, uh, okay, so... Uh, let's continue or let's resume the discussion. So again, um, um, I will be presenting or I presented uh, to further uh, to further understand para mas maintindihan natin kung ano yung role uh, ano yung role ng quantity surveyor sa construction process. So I presented a Venn diagram. Um, so dito sa Venn diagram is we have three uh, aspects. So these are the three main aspects that um, siguro dito umiikot yung construction process. So ito yung three pillars kumbaga. So the first one would be uh, the design. So um, dito yung mga architects, they are behind the scene. 
So usually, um, they are very present or they are uh, the ones in charge um, sa, uh, sa planning process. So, um, ma, uh, pero after or during the construction process, there is also uh, meron pang design, uh, meron pang architects na, na ma-monitor or take charge na dapat na-implement ng maayos yung plano. So, the second one would be the managed aspect. So, these are the ones who are overseeing or over um, or are um, in charge of the project. So, lahat ng functions, lahat ng, um, let's say, lahat ng activities, um, dumadaan yan sa kanila. They are the ones um, overseeing these activities. So, uh, pati problem. So, sila yung uh, nag- the deal with these situations. So, um, next is, or the last one would be the execute aspect. So, ito na yung mga nandun sa site. So, yung mga foremost engineer natin, river engineers natin. Um, so, they are there to monitor and to uh, make sure that the plans are being um, implemented properly in the site na walang problema ang mangyayari. So, if I, uh, uh, if I were to um, explain or to present to you kung asan ba na dito yung quantity surveyor. So, um, nandito siya sa gitna ng manage at na, and ng execute. So, um, manage because quantity surveyors are overseeing the costs, the quantities um, involving or the quantities involved in the, in the whole construction process. And execute because we are coordinating with um, what, with the site. Nandun tayo, present tayo sa site because we have to be uh, we have to um be present there na makita natin na ito na nga yung mga ito na yung uh, mga quantities na um ito na yung mga quantities na na uh, na na uh, na to turn natin into figures so uh, we have to be uh, we are um in between the manage and the execute so um okay so proceed Okay, so uh, I've scoured the internet for the definitions, uh, the description, job description of quantity surveyors, kung ano yung scope of work nila. But uh, in my um, in my presentation, I am I am focusing on um, the roles of quantity surveyors in the during the construction process. So we have quantity surveyors um, in the pre-construction process. So my presentation tends to lean on sa, kuan, sa job description or the work uh, performed by quantity surveyors during the construction pro pro uh, process mismo. So, quantity surveyors. So, of all the definitions I have seen um, in the internet or in um, other sources, so I've narrowed that to three, which is, I think, very applicable to me in my own experience. So the first one would be measures work done on site. So um, ano yung minimeasure natin? So usually um, or mainly we are measuring quantities. So kung ano yung nandoon sa BOQ, um, we are measuring the quantities uh, that are the, uh, entailed there. So also the accomplishment work accomplishment and the expenses. So, of course, because we are limited to a contract, which is the bill of quantities, um, the quantity surveyor is responsible to look into it na hindi tayo lalagpas dun sa allotted na budget. So, further, uh, later on, I will be discussing this uh, more. Siguro, expand natin later on. So, the next one, prepares documents. So, anong mga documents ba ito pinaprepare natin? So, mainly, um, there are, I think, three documents, main documents that I, uh, quantity surveyors are, are responsible for. So the first one would be progress billings. So itong progress billings, um, ito yung, uh, ito yung nakakash out ni contractor um, equivalent to what work yung natapos niya. So later on, I will be explaining that also. So second one. Um, besides the contract between the owner and the uh, contractor, so we also have other contracts na madadaan ng early litaw in between the construction process. So also, 
uh, try natin or I would be explaining also or discussing to you um, the different kinds of contracts na present sa construction industry. Just to, um, para meron kayong idea. So, the third one, um, sources, construction materials and services. So, what materials and services? So, dito natapasok yung mga suppliers, subcontractors. So, how do we source or how do we choose these suppliers and subcontractors? So, uh, I will be explaining or discussing that also later on. So, okay. So, proceed. Measuring work done on site. So, okay. So, measuring work accomplishment on site. So, um, this one, yung work accomplishment, when we talk about work accomplishment, ito yung work done on site. Say, may binuhusan tayo. So, itong area na binuhusan natin, of course, uh, for, uh, sa mata ng, uh, I mean, sa mata ng, ano, ng uh, quantity surveyor, we have, have to we have to turn in to calculate the percentage accomplishment or the percentage accomplishment of that um certain work so uh Nora, yung percentage accomplishment this is just a simple uh, equation so that's just work in quantity over total quantity so i have um siguro i have an excel file here to further um siguro pas para mas maintindihan niyo kung ano yung pinagsasabi ko dito kasi if sinabi ko lang or present ko lang sa inyo tong formula i think uh, medyo mahihirapan yung iba to catch what this really means so uh say let's say there there is a um okay uh wait lang ha uh, can i can i Okay. Okay. Um, this is an example of presentation commitment that I was trying to tell you or I was talking about. Um, this uh, Excel file, uh, ito yung koan. Mm, uh, let's say I will, sige, try ko muna ng explain kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng mga figures ito because this may be overwhelming for some. Pero um, this tab is uh, all about concrete works. So, para mas mapadali yung, mas mapadali yung pag measure ko ng, measure ko ng works on site because um, in our in our experience, our project is very uh, is very huge. So uh, that's twelve stories plus remove. So medyo uh, medyo mahirap siyang i quantify if akin isa isahin pa na pag calculate um isa 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 ko pang calculate every time. So I um, prepared siguro I prepared a an Excel file na naka ano siya naka naka separate na or naka organize na siya into structures into floors and into zones so as you can see uh, we have the basement floor here the ground floor and the floor and so on until the roof deck so this um uh this values here so meron tayong shear wall columns so everything here um everything every quantity here is or is equivalent to the quantities that are in the BOQ. So another advantage of preparing something like this is, um, alam mo talaga na hindi ka lalagpas sa BOQ because you have prepared or hinati-hati mo na uh, based on, hinati-hati mo na yung, ano, yung quantities. So talaga hindi ka nalagpas. And madali na lang kasi nakapresent na siya, input-input ka na lang. So, uh, let's say nagbuhos tayo, nagbuhos tayo ng ano, uh, sabihin natin nagbuhos tayo ng slab, tsaka ng beam. So sabay yan binubuhosan, ba? So let's say 4C, zone 4C. So um, ito is, this is the entire second floor. 
this part is the entire second floor. So, pag titignan nyo dito, naka-zoning siya, nakahati yung floor nat, nakahati yung entire second floor into zonings or into zones. So, hindi naman yung buhos, diba? So, what happens here is, if may buhos, say, let's say, zone 4 si binuhusan natin. So, input na lang dito and using that formula that I presented kanina, so, this period or this your uh, work in quantity and the total quantity for that for that particular zone for the zone 4c would be this one so 41.72 over 71.28 so pwede natin makuha yung work accomplishment niya in percentage and that would be your work done in zone 4c so if you want to know, if you want to know your work done in the second floor based on buhos, based sa buhos, kay zone 4C, then you use the 41.72 cubic over this quantity. So that is the work done in percentage for zone 4C sa entire second floor. And if you want to know pa kung ano yung work done for the entire project or for the entire structural concrete scope, so ang gagawin mo lang is this 41.72, you divide mo sa total quantities for girders and beams and also pag gusto mo pa talaga malaman kung ano yung epekto niya sa entire contract or sa entire uh, or sa entire contract so you divide 41.72 to the total concreting works so that's how it works okay so yun yung pag may measure natin ng work done or ng uh, percentage accomplishment okay so let's proceed Okay, so continue tayo. So next is monitoring materials. Okay, so ito, um, to monitor materials, so lahat ng materials na in-order natin, na pinapurchase natin, na nire-request natin. So we have to coordinate with the purchaser. So sila yung in-charge sa mga purchasing requests and the logistics and the warehouse man. So, um, yung mga incoming na deliveries, saka yung stocks present on site. So, uh, we uh, tend to, or we, we coordinate with these people or with these departments to know kung ano yung pumapasok na materials. Then, ating i-compare o i-cross-check dun sa DOQ if pasok pa ba sa budget. So, ayun. Okay. You know, yung sinabi ko, purchase requests, which uh, we will be coordinating with the purchaser for this. The delivery, so we will be uh, coordinating with the logistics for this and the inventories uh, as well. So, inventories, kay warehouse man. So, um, I have a monitoring, but because yung data don is, um, hindi ko pwede ipakita. So, I will try to explain to you or to describe to you uh, what a monitoring sheet would look like. So, um, usually, let's say, concrete ulit tayo. So, what happens here is we will be, um, uh, we will, uh, let's say, uh, gagawa tayo ng Excel sheet. So, sa first column is, let's say, the number of purchase requests. So, meron yung corresponding numbers per request. So, lagay natin sa first column yung purchase request. So, the next column would be the date of the purchase request. And the third would be the purchase order. So, yung purchase request is on-site pa yan. So, approved by the project manager. So, yung purchase order is yun na yung ipapakita kay supplier so that uh, makukuha na natin yung material. And then, yan yun siya is issued na, let's say, precedent. So, siya yung mag-release ng funds for that particular purchase. So, purchase order, and then the date of release of that purchase order, and then we proceed to the delivery. So, itong deliveries, uh, we have delivery receipts. So, every delivery na pumapasok sa site, um, the quantity surveyor should, should be aware of it and should um, monitor these deliveries kasi, um, of course, as what I've said earlier is, Kailangan you have to look closely, closely to uh, what happens on site in terms of materials and money because 
we are very limited. We are enclosed by the BOQ. So any lagpas jan is risk na ng contractor. So um, that is the main, um, let's say that's the main, or one of the main uh, responsibilities of the surveyor is to monitor everything on site na um, quanti in, in terms of quantities. So delivery, delivery receipt, and then um, on the next column is yung uh, amount of the, de I mean, the quantity of the del uh, delivered quantity, I mean, sorry, the delivered quantity. So let's say nag-order tayo ng bakal mm, 100 thousand kilograms. So, uh, hindi naman siguro or may mga suppliers tayo na hindi kayang ibigay yung 100,000 dere-derecho. So, what happens is uh, nahahati yung delivery ng 100,000 kilos. So, we we put it there na iba-iba yung delivery receipt. So, when we check uh, when we check with the when we check with the logistics and the warehouse man, so, magbabangga yung mga quantities. Therefore, walang anumal yung nagagana for ano ba. So, that is um, what one of our main responsibilities is to look closely to every quantity entering and exiting the site. So, yun yun. Okay. So, uh, the importance of this, I, the importance of this is, as what I've said, is to really ensure or to really I would like to really stress this out, is to really um, stick to the budget, stick to the budget. So to avoid wastage as well. So diba, as engineers, um, we should be economical. We should be, uh, let's say, um, we should manage our materials because we know that materials are very limited. So as engineers, ito yung essence, not, ito yung one, one of our essences is that we know we are present in a project to really manage the material use. So, para walang excess because excess means waste and waste um, hindi na baka, mapapaka, mapapa kinabangan. So, sayang siya in terms of uh, in terms of money and also we have limited materials on earth. So, to waste such is really um, parang ano nakaka ano nakaka ano sa atin as engineers because this is what we are studying um, back then kung paano natin i manage to so uh, there's that so okay so next definition would be preparing documents so ito uh, medyo marami rami to so first top of this documents would be the contract so what is what i've said earlier we have uh, we have already the main contract for a project, which is the contract between the owner and the contractor. And, and a, excuse me. So we have already that main contract. But again, during the construction process, merong mga uh, unforeseen events that we may, ano, we may face. So there are times na uh, we have to have a, siguro, uh, hindi naman siya bago, but another contract to have to be able to catch up on that uh, unforeseen event so but first uh, i will be explaining or i will be discussing to you the different um kinds of contracts different types of con contracts present in the construction process so we have the lump sum we have the cost plus time and materials and unit pricing so, ano ba tong lump sum? So, as you can see, I put there uh, an image of Pacquiao because lump sum means yung Pacquiaoan. So, I think um, we are very familiar with pa the Pacquiaoan, um, yung payment. So, Pacquiaoan or the lump sum or the fixed amount contract is just a fixed price for all activities. So, Regardless of the time, regardless of the materials, regardless of the um, amount of people involved with this certain activity is my fixed price. So yung fixed price na yun will cover all. So let's say um, yung usual natin na uh, daily rate or hour rate, so hindi yun masusunod because um, regardless, kunwari uh, 3 hours lang or 3 hours lang yung, ay 8 hours, 8 hours yung usapan ninyo, pero kaya naman pala nilang tapusin in 
let's say, seven or six hours, yung pressure na napag-usapan yun na negotiate niyo is, will still be the same. So, yun na yun. Hindi na yun mababago because, yun na nga, pakyawan. So, fix na yung price for the activity. And then, cost plus. So, this one, um, yung babayaran ni owner uh, or ni client is the actual cost generated during the construction. So, when we say the actual cost, so, uh, yung ginastos mismo ni contractor, uh, regardless, is yun yung babayaran ni owner. So, um, uh, with cost plus, I think you have, or the owner or the client should have 100% trust in the contractor because um, it uh, we are talking about actual cost. So, wala tayong cost na declare ni contractor na nagastos niya for that project or for that activity is yun yung babayaran ni owner. But then again, uh, there, there will be a discussion as to yung limits nung pwede nilang isingin kay, kay owner. So, um, in this cost plus, so uh, we have, or this cost, yung actual cost is uh, divided into two. So, the actual cost would be uh, divided into the direct cost and the overhead cost. So, yung direct cost, ito yung nagastos ni contractor for materials, for labor, for the time uh, they spent doing that activity. And the overhead, uh, overhead na, uh, overhead cost would be the salary, yung sa insurance, yung, uh, ano pa ba, permits. So, there. Yun yung dalawang component ng actual cost na sisingilin ni contractor kay owner. So, cost plus, um, Meron tayong dalawa, cost plus percentage to cover overhead profit and cost plus uh, cost plus fee contract. So, itong yung number one, yung cost plus percentage to cover overhead and profit. So, uh, si contractor may gagawing activity. So, um, pag ginawa niya yung activity, uh, wala siyang incentive kung matatapos niya maaga as kontra doon sa yung discuss niyo na period in estimating niyo. So, uh, kunwari, nine months yung dinidiskus niyo na matatapos. So, wala siyang incentive if matatapos niyo yun in seven months. But then, the longer the duration, the higher the profit of the contractor. So, uh, yun yung cost plus percentage to cover over. So, wala ngang incentive, but then again, pag tumatagal yung kuha, yung duration ng project, eh, mas lumalaki naman yung profit. So, parang, yun na yung incentive itself. And the second one would be uh, cost plus fee contract. So, ito naman, um, the longer the, so, pabalik taran lang siya nung first. The longer the duration, mas bumababa yung percentage profit ni contractor. So, as e contractor yun syempre tatapusin mo, if ganito yung napag-usapan ninyo ni owner, cost plus fee contract, eh di, ikaw, you will try your best to to do the job quickly because as time passes, mas bumababa yung profit mo. So, that's your loss. So, yun yun. Uh, the advantage of cost plus pala um, is that if uh, if mapapansin ninyo is yung advantage niya is that the contractor is yung risks for that activity is covered. So, walang well, lang ano kay contractor yun kasi sagot ng actual cost and then um, this is very useful if uh, indefinite or wala kayong concrete na plano so parang ongoing yung discussion sa plano walang uh, walang nakaset na plano so um, ito this is very useful for that kind of project so uh, although the the cons of this cost plus is that again si dogi dito si owner unless may trust siya 100% so um also the final cost for this uh for this cost plus is uncertain because habang tumatagal yun na nga hindi mo alam kung ano yung yung matototal na ano na amount so the final amount or the final budget for this project is very unknown so you know, uh, this is a disadvantage for the owner side. So, also, um, projects or the activity may take longer than expected. So, yun na nga.
And the third one, time and material. So this one is um, gumagamit tayo ng early or delay. So this is, I think, very um, good if the activity is just small or minimal. So early or daily rate lang. So next, unit pricing. So this unit pricing is, this one is what we usually use in big projects such as ours. So uh, we have koan, um, predetermined, uh, predetermined quantities. So this is the usual or um, ito yung kadalasan ginagamit ng mga uh, construction firm or mga koan contractors. Yung meron ng inestimate beforehand and then ibibid na lang. So, uh, may unit pricing doon. So, every quantity, every unit quantity, uh, meron na yung uh, equivalent na unit price which uh, entails the material cost, the labor cost, and the equipment cost. So, yun. Okay. So, let's proceed. So, also, uh, after, uh, as I've already discussed the types of contracts, so I will be discussing the contracts that we may uh, we may face or we may uh, yung pwede nating ma ano ma daanan during the construction process. So first one would be change orders. So um, change orders are a substantial change a uh, substantial change affecting original design and schedule. So um, in my experience, I've had um, I, we had a sa project namin, we had uh, to change the original design from slab on grade to uh, pressure slab because yung area dyan sa Ecoland is mataas, mataas yung water table. So, hindi enough yung slab on grade to, um, to protect the structural integrity of the building. Kasi mataas yung building and then slab on grade and then mataas lang yung water table. So, yung push ng tubig um, will prevail. So, baka, ano, uh, sa amin babalik yung, ano, if tinuloy namin yung slab on grade. So, um, upon checking or verifying that, yun na nga, mataas yung water table. So, uh, there was a decision made to change the original design from slab on grade to, to pressure slab. So, yung pressure, pressure slab, uh, mas makapal. So, from point one. Point fifteen, I think um, the thickness of the, the slab on, in the basement area is um, changed to 0.5. So, mas makapal na siya. And this, point, uh, in this pressure slab is um, strong enough to withstand yung pressure from coming from the water from the water table. So, yung push is ma, uh, ano niya, mapipi, uh, I mean, uh, it's strong enough to prevent overturning. So, yun yun. But then, um, because of the change on the original design and also the time it took to redesign, uh, especially kasi medyo ano to, kasi kailangan mo pang i-defend kay owner na this change um, is for the better. So, of course, it took time to really tell or to really, um, to really maano namin yung, yung owner na kailangan nga i-change. So, yun na nga, uh, because of this change, the pressure slab is meron tayong increase in the increase in the amount. So, from the original contract, nadagdagan yung sisingilin ni contract, ay sisingilin ni contractor kay owner because yun na nga, um, nadagdagan yung yung materials because of the pressure slab change. So, then, as you can see, it affected the original design as well as the schedule na extend ng konti yung ano na extend yung konti yung construction duration so therefore um, we proposed a change order so yun na yun so the second one would be variation order um i i have searched for the search the resources for this and usually change order and variation order na interchange lang but um the, i think variation order varies really because Minimal changes lang yung pinag-uusapan natin kay variation order. So, these minimal changes, hindi na-apektuhan yung original design and schedule. So, these are siguro additives lang, deductives lang, and 
uh, the best example for this would be siguro changes in methods um siguro for repairs so change in method for repairs would not really necessarily affect the design and the schedule so um to post that change in method that is variation order so okay next so okay Ito. So the number two document that we are preparing as quantity surveyors is the progress billing. So ito yung pinaka importanting document na uh, hawak ng quantity surveyor because this document, the progress billing will tell or will ito yung mag ano kung ano yung yung papasok na pera sa inyo as base sa ano yung nagawa ninyong work. So um, parts or I mean uh, ano yung naka-attach for a progress billing so we have the cover page so the cover page would uh, we have or nakalagay dito yung net amount so we have gross amount we also have net amount so later on I will try to explain this if not meron pa tayong time so we have the net amount or I'll just discuss this now so ang um, net amount is just um, the gross amount minus the retention minus um, recoupment from down payment and minus the withholding tax. So, yun na yung, yun yung ilalagay natin sa cover page na yun yung masisingil natin. So, hindi pa yung gross na amount yung masisingil but yung net amount yung pwede nating isingil kay owner. So, later on, i-discuss ko yung uh, down payment at saka kung ano yung retention. So, next is the accomplishment. So, dito magagamit um, mainly yung percentage accomplishment kasi dito natin itatabulate yung mga works done and then works done ita, uh, we will be turning that works done to figures in terms of percentage and that percentage we will turn that into money so dito malalaman kung ano yung 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 ating uh, accomplishment in terms of money so after david uh, just to uh, just to state na wala tayong walang monkey business na nakapaloob dyan sa progress billing, all of the quantities, all of the amounts are true and this shall be notarized by a lawyer and progress photos. So, of course, the owner would like to know ano na yung itsura ng site because not all the time they are present on the site. Um, they may siguro, meron silang uh, representative na will look or will visit the site but that would hindi siya palagi so uh, we shall attach or um, progress photos sa progress billing natin just to really show kung ano yung ano na yung nangyayari sa site to the owner so the next one is the as built ito yung as built itong as built is um plans na um dito natin issue show yung yung actual versus theoretical so Sa plano, we have a fixed, we have fixed dimensions, we have fixed na um, reference points. So, we will be checking or we will be showing that as built kung ano yung actual, if masyado bang malayo or masyado bang yung accuracy nung trabaho natin. So, parang comparison siya ng theoretical at ng actual. And um, last is additional documents requested by owner. So, this varies. Um, in our case, we have to attach the concrete pouring request just to really prove na yung binil namin, yung nilagay namin sa billing is nabuhusan na nga talaga. So, this varies depende sa uh, discussion nyo with owner and the third party. So, not all the time may additional documents sa manginihingi but the first five are the main um, attachments of the progress billing. So, Okay, ito. So, I've talked about this kanina, the down payment dun sa cover page, sa ka retention. So, itong down payment, um, part of the original, part of the contract price. So, usually, this is 30% of the contract. Usually, that's the standard uh, of the contract price, 30% of the contract price. And second is the retention. Itong retention, this is the amount retained. Um, amount retained or ito kinukuha binabawi ng ano binabawi or uh, stagnant to na amount uh, hindi muna siya makiklaim ni 
uh, ni contractor to protect the client's inter best interest. So, this amount will be claimed by the contractor upon project completion. Pero may mga times na hindi yung whole ang pwedeng i-claim ni contractor by the end of the project. So, um, there are times na siguro 50% muna ng, uh, ng retention amount is makaklaim by the end of the project. And for a certain time, uh, yung 50% naman is makukuha na. So, yung balance. And um, yung mga back jobs, yung mga repairs on that uh, certain period, dun kukunin sa retention. So, dun siya sisingilin or dun siya pwede kunin. So, uh, the standard for this retention, by the way, is uh, 10%. So, 10% ang standard. And depende sa discussion or depende sa kontrata discussed with the owner and the contractor, um, pwede, pwede siya matweak. So, pwedeng 10% for the first 50% 50, 50 progress accomplishment and then uh, after that 50% progress accomplishment, pag, na, pag pumasok na kayo sa 60% or 70%, then 5% na lang yung retention na mariretain. So, may mga ganun na cases. So, next. Okay, so ito, contractor's reports. So, we have two contractor's reports, the daily and the weekly. So, uh, ano yung nakapaloob dito sa daily and weekly contractor's report. So, um, the first one would be the activities. So, uh, dito nyo gagamitin yung English skills nyo. So, i-enumerate ninyo yung activities on-site for every trade. So, let's say structural na trade, ano yung mga activities for that day? For the mechanical trade, for the fire protection trade, plumbing trade, electrical trade. So, iisa-isahin nyo yung enumerate ninyo kung ano yung activities for that day or for that week. So, second is manpower and equipment. So, for that certain day or for that day, ilan yung present na mga tao? So, from the staff, ilan? Itatabulate nyo yan. From the direct direct um, manpower, yung mga uh, helpers natin, uh, carpenters, steelmen, so, ilan i-enumerate nyo yan. And then, also, equipment, if uh, functioning ba lahat ng equipment, uh, you will be uh, tabulating also that in numbers. So, baka may nasira na equipment. At least, na-monitor dun, excuse me, uh, na, na, na re reflect dun sa report na yung, let's say, you have two dump trucks on site and one is not functioning. So, you will be, um, you will be proclaiming in that report na one lang yung dump truck because wa, uh, yung isa is sira. So, mamamonitor dyan yung, yung resources natin on site. And the third one, uh, weather condition. So, this weather condition is um, important because uh, at times, uh, lalo na pag maulan yung panahon, we can make claims for extension of time for this. Kasi, um, of course, if malakas yung ulan, syempre may work stoppage. So, um, we can apply or we can propose an extension of time for wed for due to weather condition. So, also earthquakes. So, kailangan natin ilista lahat ng nangyayari on-site. And also, additional documents. So, um, depende rin sa uh, napag-usapan or ano yung nire-request ni consultant or ni owner ng mga additional documents. So, pwedeng uh, pwedeng attendance ng mga tao na to prove na ito yung present naman power, uh, pwede ring pictures, pwede progress photos also, we can also attach that or list of visitors pwede rin. So, that uh, boils down to what the what the owner uh, requests. So, yung additional documents. So, but uh, the main attachments for contractors' reports would be the activities, manpower and equipment, and the weather conditions. So, yun yun. Okay. So, next, sourcing materials and services. So, ito na yung subcon and suppliers. So, choosing suppliers and subcontractors. So, when we choose or when we try to choose our suppliers and subcontractors, so, syempre, um, when you announce that you are searching for a certain type of material, syempre, uh, maraming mag apply to supply for you. And how do you, uh, so as a quantity surveyor, one of our responsibilities also is 
uh, we have to we have to choose um, from a from a number of suppliers and subcontractors that are offering their services. So how do we choose wisely or smartly? Kasi, syempre, um, uh, mag-offer sila ng, ano nila, ng material nila. And you have to really look into it kung what is the best option to be used or to, uh, to select. So I have, I think, three uh, factors that I try to use or try to um, apply in choosing suppliers in suppliers. So, so uh, we have which is more economical, which meets the desired requirements most, and which have agreeable terms. So, um, ma'am, uh, kailangan ba, what if, kunwari, ano, um, na-meet niyo yung designer's requirements and also agreeable yung terms, pero mahal. So, uh, for me, you have to really, as much as possible, you have to fit these three factors to be the best option. So, uh, syempre, you have to really look per uh, per service kung ano yung the best option so um more economical kung ano yung pinaka uh, pinaka mababa yung singin uh, meets designer's requirements uh, of course there is a pre-existing um pre-existing na specification for a material or there is a pre-existing brand na nire-require or uh, uh sinasuggest ni designer but then Minsan, due to the availability of the product, of course, we have to consider also ano yung siguro mas malapit or ano yung available locally. So, there are times that we cannot really choose kung ano yung synergist or pinrescribe pin, pin prescribe designer. So, we try to scour for options for this and the closer the the closest one to the designer sequence or the yung pinaka malapit or pinaka identical to what designer wants is um, the best one for that factor alone. So also terms are agreeable. So this one uh, medyo tricky to because um, dito pumapasok yung scam which I will be explaining also later on. Uh, so there are uh, subcontractors or suppliers that uh, may offer low price, low price in singil, pinakalag sa quotation is low price, but then when you look at their terms, 70% yung down payment. And that is very fishy if you think about it, that 70% yung down payment. And of course, uh, 70% you pay that right away. And hindi ka ba magtataka na that 70%, baka mamaya takbuhan ka ni, ni subcon subcontractor or ni supplier. So, you have to really look into the terms as well. Not only the price, not only the uh, the quality of the product, but also if the terms are agreeable. So, ito na. So, yung sinasabi the regarding uh, the agreeable terms is we uh, we may encounter certain scams um, during the selection process. So, I will try to explain this to you. Para in the future, if you if you apply as a quantity surveyor, so at least you have um, meron ka ng ideas to uh, what what scams are present in the selection process of subcontractors and suppliers. So I've enumerated four. Uh, we have the ghoster, we have into the unknown, super junior, and the BFF. So first, the ghoster. Um, ito yung sinabi ko kanina. Uh, usually what happens is that the supplier or the subcontractor asks or offers the cheapest amount that there could be from all of your options. Ito yung pinaka mababa. But then, they require a large down payment. So let's say, mm, 70% down payment or 50% from the standard 30%. So ang layo-layo. So from that, you have an idea na siguro this term or the one that they require, the down payment that they are requiring is very fishy. So, baka mamaya, igos ka niyan. So, uh, edi patay ka as a contractor. So, you have to be very uh, particular, very um, extra careful in the selection process because we are talking about money here. So, ayun na nga. Um, to avoid this, of course, uh, to avoid 
yung mga ghosts dyan sa mga choices mo. So to avoid those is that you have to really extra put into extra effort to review the documents that are submitted to you. So you have to look into their quotation. You have to compare side by side. Kasi usually suppliers will offer, um, uh, siguro hindi siya same, but almost, uh, almost of the same level ng mga amount. So if you see of all of your options, kumari 1 million yung, nasa 1 million halos yung mga offer nila. And then there's this one supplier or subcontractor ang offer you is 500,000. Siyempre ikaw as a, as a contractor or as a quantity surveyor, siyempre, ang, sa, ang sarap sa mata nun. So, um, uh, money-wise, that's your best option for the factor of money alone. That's that's the cheapest you can have. But then, upon reviewing uh, the terms, yun na nga, yung document niya is madong malaki, iba magkaka na because that is really fishy. Baka mamaya, magos ka. So, you have to really look into it. You have to require the necessary um, necessary documents like siguro company profile or lists of the projects they have done in the past. So, just for extra reference. And the second one, yung into the, into the unknown. So, ito yung mga subbon or mga supplier na hingi ng hingi engineer, wala na kaming ganito, wala na, wala na kaming ganyan. Ito, hihingi kami ng certain amount from you para ma-fill in yung mga kulang para para tuloy-tuloy tayo sa trabaho. So, of course, if ganun, hihingi na si ng documents, syempre, magtaka ka na because um, for quantity surveyors, you have you have to be really particular with details. You have to be very keen um, you, you have to be very alert and you have to be really in kung ka dapat meticulous ka as a quantity surveyor that all should all should be monitored kasi syempre if may mga ano dyan may, uh, hindi magbabanga or hindi magbabala sa the end of the project yung yung amount mo masyadong malaki yung masyadong malaki yung nalagas or yung inigisig na BOQ mo di syempre hahanapin o i-review yan sa documents so if wala kang documents na ma-offer, then ikaw yung liable because that is your responsibility as a quantity surveyor. So if ganon, hindi na nang hindi, verbally, walang document present, yung pera mo, pag binigay mo sa kanya, sasama kayo sa into the unknown. So dapat may iwasan natin yung ganyan yung mag-con at mga suppliers. So next one, yung mga member ng super junior, yung magbibigay ng quotation Tapos yung quotation nila, pag yun na yung in mo, during the construction process na, biglang, hala, sorry, engineer, nakalimutan kong ilagay yung ganitong ganyan, hindi ko na pansin. Hala, sorry, engineer, hindi ko na hindi ko nalagay yung ganito. Okay lang ba, nagdag tayo ang million. So, of course, upon selecting from the quotations, in the select, selection process, syempre, you chose, you chose the service because you think or you thought that is the best one. All the three factors, you have reviewed it and uh, this is the best one for you. But then, pag, pag uh, trabaho na, biglang, oh, sorry, engineer, sorry, sorry. So, yun nga, baka member yun na super junior, sige, sorry na, sorry. So, you have to be very wary of this kind of people na dapat yung nandun sa quotation is what you see is what you get. So, kung ano yung dineclare nila sa quotation, dapat yun na yun until the end. So, be, be vigilant of this kind of people. And the last one, ito, uh, I think, um, medyo controversial to, the BFF. So, uh, ito yung mga kickback, kickboxer. So, um, ito yung kakaibiganin ka, tapos sasabihin sa'yo, engineer, pag na-push mo or pag na-award sa akin yung, yung, yung ito, kunwari, na ako yung, kuan ako yung, kukunin ninyo for this kind of material, for this kind of service, bibigyan kita ng certain percentage of what we will be getting. So, doon pa lang kickback. So, of course, as an engineer, we have to maintain our integrity. Uh, we we shall avoid this kind of deals, this kind of under-the-table deals na uh, kakainiganin ka, papakainin ka sa labas, tapos biglang biglang bubulong sa'yo na may percentage ka, siguro 10% ba ng kontrata, Ilan na makukuha is meron kang presentation. Of course, um, 
you are skipping three three steps which is yung yung selection process natin sinabi ko kanina we are skipping the step because of our own personal interest so malay mo yung yung what is the assurance that that service or that uh, that material is the best out there pinakain ka lang sa labas tapos yun na yung pinili mo kasi nga may utang na loob ka pinakain ka tapos meron kang kuha by the end of the or paano ba edi hindi na hindi na satisfy yung three factors natin so um that would uh, certain affect uh, the the run of our uh, construction process um particularly sa pera so what if ano pala yung substandard pala siya or madaling masira edi yung back jobs niyan or repairs so doon hugot yung doon doon tayo medyo malulugi or uh, doon tayo lalagpas sa BOQ so of course you really have to stick to your um you have to really maintain your integrity as an engineer and you really have to um uh say or you really have to uh let's say wag tayong tatanggap ng ganun na papakainin lang tayo tapos bibigyan lang tayo ng kung ano and then uh, at the end of the project uh, because of that certain decision you made edi eh, apekto lahat what if you know what what if some standards so of course, the, the, the responsibility falls back to you as the quality server because you were the one who selected that supplier. So, nasa you yung blame for that. Okay, so, proceed. <laughs> okay, so, uh, last, of course, uh, I, I think I've mentioned this kanina that um, we, if there is a pre-existing uh, material or service na gusto ni designer, gusto ni owner. But then, because of the availability, hindi siya available locally, um, we try to explore our choices. So, this is where material submittal enters. So, uh, this is the sequence for um, submitting a material submittal or for proposing a material submittal. So, first, but not all the time, is we try to estimate the material required on site so of course just to check or double check kung ano yung nandoon sa ano nandoon sa BOQ na quantity of course there is always um there is always a difference with what is in the BOQ and what is in actual so of course hindi naman masyadong malaki yan pero just to be really sure um we estimate it again and then we send that material uh, we send that quantity to the supplier for the quotation but then there are also times na si supplier mismo yung mag-estimate. Bibigyan mo lang sila ng plano. But, of course, uh, that depends on your discussion with the supplier. So, upon uh, upon sending that to the suppliers for a quotation request, and then magpapasa na silang lahat sa'yo ng quotation, of course, there is the selection process. You select the best deal based on the three factors that I've mentioned a while ago. And then, upon um, selecting the best choice, you request the supporting documents. So, usually, what we request would be the technical um, technical specifications of the material, and then um, the certificate of compliance. So, yung certificate of compliance is uh, just to certify that the material um, material is fit or pumasa siya on, on a certain standard. So, uh, the third one would be the test report or test result. So, of course, just to know, just to prove that yun nga, quality yung material or yung service. And then, Upon acquiring those supporting documents, then you uh, are ready to submit that to the designer and then hintay ka na lang ng feedback niya if approved ba or disapproved or kung okay ba sa kanya yung material na pinasa mo. So, I think that would be all. So, thank you very much for listening. I, I hope na may natutunan kayo sa aking presentation very interesting in the construction process. So thank you very much. So thank you so much, Ma'am Elaine, for a wonderful, timely, and irrelevant discussion. For sure, our viewers who are currently watching and joining our live video are now well informed by the lessons that you have imparted for today's abreast event, especially to my fellow civil engineering students uh, by how to manage a construction project from planning, managing the time and the materials, being knowledgeable in handling construction costs, 
uh, processing the billings, making reports both daily and weekly, the type of scams that we may encounter, and many more. So everyone, now all the questions uh, and concerns are gathered. Engineer Elaine here will answer those mind-bogging questions of yours. But before we proceed to our question and answer portion, I would like to give thanks, of course, to those loyal viewers for tuning in on our live broadcast up until now. And now we will have our question and por answer portion where our guest speaker caters your questions and concerns. Okay, so what will be our first question for today? From Oh, hello. Good afternoon. From Neri Mary Jean Bunda. Sabi niya po, makasave po ba sa pakiyawan or mas expensive? Okay, so uh, thank you for that question. So uh, it it will depend the it will depend sa type of activity. So if you think the noise matagal, uh, matagal yung duration, then most probably, tsaka marami yung tao, most probably mas makakales ka. But if the activity is just for a short duration and konti lang yung tao, and you think, as an engineer, you can see to it that um, matatapos lang naman siya agad-agad as uh, compared to the original um, agreement, then uh, mas lugi ka. So it will always depend on the situation. So yun. So thank you, ma'am. Next question. I hope uh, nakuha po ni ma'am Neri yung answer niyo po. And from Justin Primary Din Glasa, I hope I pronounced it correct. Uh, paano po sinadya ng contractor? Patagalin yung duration ng activity para mas malaki profit niya. So I think uh, she is pertaining to the cost plus siguro na ano na uh, type of contract. So I've discussed that that type of contract, if matagal yung uh, duration, then mas malaki yung profit niya. So uh, that's where I think I try to, siguro, I try to not really recommend cost plus because you can only or uh, cost plus is uh, the best option for you if 100% yung trust mo or kakilala mo yung contractor. But then, if, kunwari, ganyan, uh, wala ka yung trust between the contractor and the owner, so, kunwari, uh, lulukohin ka, patatagalin ng sadya yung duration, then that's on you. Kasi, hindi, hindi mo masyadong kakilala yung contractor, or siguro, wala kang Um, and then you show. Okay, ma'am. Parang, yeah, sorry for the technical error about that. Uh, we will have ma'am Elaine as soon as the technical director fix the problem. So we will wait, for, of course, for ma'am Elaine to be back. Oh 
Oh, I'm so sorry. The mic was on mute. So thank you for tuning with us and welcome again to our webinar. Sorry for that technical error. So we will continue to our question and portion answer. Mama Lane? Okay, so uh, yun na nga. I, I think the best suggestion for that is to really select or during sa uh, discussion pa lang with the contractor, si owner should be, uh, should ask um, should ask from other professionals, I think, that uh, uh, knows the construction process uh, process well so that uh, she she or he could select the best contract that there is. So, um, siguro, hindi siya, I mean, um, hindi advisable for that situation if hindi mo kakilala yung, or hindi ganun yung trust mo dun sa 
contractor. So, I think uh, the best thing to do is really explore your choices. So, hanap ka ng mas maganda or the best the best contract that will fit your situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so okay, much so for you. And, Ma'am Mika, do you want to share a short opinion for the question? Uh, Ma'am Nika, naka-off po yung mic niyo. Ma'am, yung mic niyo po. <laughs> Pasensya na. <laughs> okay. Okay, sige, as sige. For the question, uh, summarize ko lang ulit yung sinabi ko. Kasi if, okay. if um, yung question is bakit, ay paano if ang contractor if, um, ano ngayon, sadyain niya patagalin yung um, project? Yes, you know? ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Activity per... Uh, mas, malaki mas malaki profit niya. Profit niya. Uh, okay. Hindi kasi um, um, pagkakalam ko is before mag-start yung project, no? may deliberation pa yan be between the owner and the contractor. And dyan, madidiscuss na kasi nila yung, yung schedule ng project. Kasi isa yan siya sa building permit na ipapas. Uh, isa yan siya sa requirements ng building permit, eh, yung, yung schedule ng project. So if if ang um, kunari kasi may mga may mga owners din kunari sa residential may mga owners na gusto nila padaliin yung padaliin yung project no so kunari in 3 months time dapat ma matapos na yung uh, ma-complete na yung project no so um ayun no so di di yan basta-basta ma mapa nen mapatagal lang <laughs> ng contractor kasi before pa again mag-start yung project Isa na yan sila sa isa na yan na subject na um madidiscuss between the owner and the contractor. Yun lang. <laughs> Thank you so much ma'am for that wonderful share of opinion. For the next question, Paul Lim, it is from Paul Lim, is there a difference between quantity surveyor and cost engineer ma'am? Okay, so uh, I uh, thank you for that question again. So Paul, uh, I guess uh, if you really look into it uh, quantity surveyor and cost engineer, same same lang yung roles nila. But then, what happens is that the cost engineer um, usually is present in the pre-construction process. So, nasa planning sila banda. And that, ang yung role nila don is they are uh, um, considering or they are quantifying uh, included na dun yung risk analysis. So they are present in the planning process and quantity surveyors I think is present in uh, during the construction process na. So pero same same lang yung essence ng ano nila yung definition ng job description nila but then yung kung saan sila banda dun sa process ng construction dun na siguro nagba So thank you. So, thank you so much, ma'am. I hope na liwanagan ka <laughs> Mr. Paul. <laughs> okay, from next question from Mr. Alan Kala. Ano po requirements for extra payment na pwede ma-file kay owner if ever nalugi si contractor sa cost? Um, if sa simula nang hangyo si owner kay contractor about sa cost? Okay, so if sa simula naghangyo si owner kay contractor about sa cost so most possibly i think um merong uh, let's say i've encountered the situation siguro fixed na yung kuan fixed na yung amount na gusto ni owner and then he he the owner just gives that amount to the contractor siya nang bahala mag budget siguro ito yung nangyari dito and then what happens during the construction process is that hindi niya na hit so sumobra siya doon sa budget because of course, uh, fixed na nga yung amount, hindi, bali hindi si contractor yung nag-estimate nung, nung 
uh, nung amount. So, I think um, right in the beginning is risk that is the risk of the contractor because of course um, uh, it's very uh, dapat alam natin kung ano talaga yung yung actual or at least uh, close to the actual na mga quantities that would uh, that would uh, be used in the project so if yun na nga binigyan ka lang ng binigyan ka lang ng budget and then uh, it's up to you so maraming malalagas to na needed na mga materials and of course uh, hindi talaga may iwasan dun na malugi ka and so what happens is you will be trying to uh, to propose an extra payment kay owner so i guess um, for the contractor side you have to prepare uh, a detailed document as to why uh, as to why you exceeded the budget so you have to list there ano yung mga ano yung mga uh, services yung materials na hindi nasali dun sa original uh, BOQ but then it was needed um, during the construction process so you have to prepare a detailed document along with um, the attachments needed siguro you have to um, you have to prepare uh, kung ano yung yung chronology of events ba and um, a quanti uh, siguro an estimate a quantified estimate as to um, kung magkano ba yung mga ano yung effect in terms of cost ng materials na uh, siguro sumobra dun sa BOQ and then you uh, you try to talk it out with the owner you try to really push that kasi at the first place it was the owner who who gave you a fixed budget so of course uh, the owner should have an open mind and really understand that of course uh, medyo mahirap uh, for a contractor to move to uh, to move with a fixed budget na hindi siya yung nag-decide. So, siguro, consideration na lang sa part ni owner. But then, for the contract contractor side, you, you just have to prepare a detailed document and you really have to um, prove that ito nga yung amount na sumobra and you are asking for additional funds based on that document. So, yun siguro yung uh, best option that there is. That was so detail, detail oriented and so insightful. <laughs> Super. So from from Mr. Paul Lim, good PM engineer De Leon, about the retention, it is stated that every billing there's a retention of ten percent. But there's a law at that na pwede siya maklaim using bonds. Does your company Okay, so nakakadalawa ka na Paul, ha? <laughs> um <laughs> So I think uh, what he's talking about is the retention bond. So medyo hassle kasi yung claiming of bond, a eh, claiming of retention na by the end of uh, the dependence of discussion by the end of the project and then another certain period makiklaim yung balance. So there are times that contractors uh, use retention bonds but then I am not very familiar with retention bonds. So um, I think I'll just message you Paul and then um, I will look into it kasi mukhang interesting yung topic. But with your second question, uh, does your company or does our company use uh, bonds, uh, retention bonds? So um, we are following the standard 10% and then uh, yung makiklaim siya by the end of the project. Yun yung, uh, yun yung discussion namin sa project namin. So we are not using retention bonds. So I'll just message you, Paul, kasi I am not very familiar with retention bonds. I'll try my best to answer that question privately. Okay, can you just say Paul, super cooperative, Jitshana. So let's proceed to the next question from Mr. Lawrence Patnugot. Good afternoon, ma'am. So far as in your experience, po, saan po yung best na store or hardware na magbili ng mga construction supplies, ma'am? <laughs> okay, so uh, aha, <laughs> um, sa. So in our uh, experience, um, there is no best. <laughs> I think uh, there for our siguro sa type of project that we have, uh, there is. I think I would say now we are not monopoly. Ano ba yan? Parang hindi kami nakafocus into one supplier. So we try to explore our choices from outside Davo, from inside Davo, locally available. So we don't, 
we try or we don't tend to focus or get our supplies in one or sa isang hardware store lang. So there are stores that offers um siguro uh, yung availability nga may mga ibang hardware na hindi available yung hinahanap namin. So we try to find our supplies to other uh, stores. So I think um uh, sa, para sa experience namin is there is really no you you would say the best store hardware <laughs> so you just have to really look into your options and depend on the type of material because not all stores offer um the materials so may iba na wala hindi available then may iba na ganito lang yung offer nila so yun yan you just explore your choices thank you so much thank you so that was very very detailed answer kung wala other choice other option so another <laughs> yes so another question from mr luis hito agustin ocho so just curious po if di po matapos ang project within contract would it be possible to ask favor to have another allowance or is it really a contract is a contract okay so i'm confused with the question uh is it really a contract is a contract so i think what he's trying to say is pag uh, there is, di ba, meron tayong uh, projected schedule. So, what happens or what, uh, paano kapag tapos ni contractor siguro ng mas maaga than the projected schedule yung siguro tinatanong niya. So, uh, would it be possible to ask allowance? So, if you're saying, uh, siguro, if you're saying the allowance is another, yung labas pa sa budget, another contract or another amount na nalabas dun sa original na budget, I think you don't have the right to do that. You ha you just really stick with the BOQ or the original budget. So, uh, <laughs> walang, ano, I, regard, uh, siguro, depende sa kontrata. If in, wala kayong fixed na budget, if natapos mo yung uh, activity uh, earlier, then may, I think I, discuss this a while ago na merong isang contract na nag offer ng incentive if maaga mong matatapos yung activity mm. but then usually uh, i think rare lang yung con yung yung uh, cost plus so uh, what happens is there is always or most of the time there's always a fixed uh, amount that there is so um siguro you cannot request an, an incentive na labas pa dun sa budget so you can only claim what is within the budget Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Do we have another question left? Um, I guess there will be none. Yeah, wala na talaga na flash. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess that will be all, Ma'am Elaine. I don't think we have any follow-up questions. So, now we will proceed in uh, giving our guest speaker her notable award for giving us such a remarkable discussion. Miss <laughs> Alexis Makasampan will be the one who will pass on the awards and certificate to our guest speaker. Uh, Miss Alexis, you may now proceed. Yes, so department, we would like to award the certificate of appreciation uh, to engineer Elaine Joy William for sharing her valuable knowledge and expertise as the guest speaker in the webinar entitled Quantity Surveying 101 Managing Construction Costs from Outside to Compare in the spring of 18th of December 2020. So, Mamalene, thank you so much for being our um, guest speaker for today. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, uh, certificate. I am very humbled and honored because um, to be able to talk in a webinar and to think that this is my first job experience and I am able to uh, discuss uh, my first job experience to some students to give them an idea of other options besides yung ano yung kadalasan na alam natin from college. So it's really humbling. It's very honoring in my uh, part. So thank you very much, JMC. Thank you very much for inviting me for uh, talking, uh, for discussing in this webinar. So thank you very much. So once again, thank you so much, 
Engineer Elaine Choi de Leon for giving us your time and imparting your knowledge in today's webinar. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are very grateful for having you as our guest speaker, uh, for it leaves an impact to us. And I know these learnings will help us and guide us in our future endeavors uh, in life, most especially to those engineering students. And also, I would like to give thanks uh, to these people who are behind the event and to make the event possible. To our technical director for assisting and supporting us so that we will have a smooth webinar today. Ma'am Mirna Ambrosio, thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, to my fellow colleague for assisting me during uh, hosting Miss Alexis Makasampon. Thank you so much. And to our ever supportive professor, engineer Nika K. Balanio, once again, Thank you so much, ma'am. Without you, with a, uh, this webinar wouldn't be possible. It is such an honor to be with you, ma'am, in conducting this webinar. Though it's finals na po, so it's such an honor. And to wrap things up, we have engineer Nika K. Balanio for our closing remarks. Ma'am Nika? Thank you, Ms. Ironica. Good afternoon, um, everyone. Um, I would just like to thank, once again, the people behind this event, this successful event. I would like to thank, first and foremost, the Director of Communications Affairs, Ma'am Mirna Ambrosio, also our Technical Director. And thank, um, uh, um, thank you for inviting us, the Civil Engineering Program, for a webinar here in GMC. Edu Trends. To our guest speaker, Engineer Elaine, um, thank you for gracing us, for sharing your valuable knowledge and expertise ng quantity surveying. Um, though um, on-site po kayo, thank you po talaga for um, honoring us today. And to my ES413 um, students, especially to Alexis Makasampod's group for uh, making this event possible. To all participants and viewers joining us live via Facebook, via YouTube, thank you for being with us and staying with us until the very end ng webinar. We hope to see you again in the next episode, hopefully by the next semester. Please continue to support this GMC advocacy of informing, inspiring, and transcending as we continue to achieve educational excellence despite the current educational disturbances. That's all. Thank you. That ends another substantive discussion on JMC Edit Trends, produced by the Jose Maria College Communication Affairs Office. On behalf of our founding president, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy, thank you for being with us. Join us again next time for another interesting, inspiring, and transcending discussion on JMC Edit Trends. Bye, everyone, and keep safe.